Okay, so this is future me to show you what I did wrong. Those pins are the incorrect pins for this type of application. And let me show you why. When you're when you're using a trailer and you're bouncing all around and you know bouncing up and down the road, these pins will literally just pop right out of place when you do that. So the right connection here would be something like a hood pin or something where you could connect at the top or even a, um, a bolt with a wing nut at the top. So I'll correct that later, but for now, I'm just going to leave these in here just to hold these in place. Wire everything up for, uh, for this trailer now. Um, I've got a couple of things to work with. I've got this uh, seven-way plug collect, uh, connector little like a breakout box it's got all of your different um, connections uh, I've got a breakaway uh, connector uh, along with a battery uh, those are all gonna get mounted in the front and in the back I got a couple of uh, new lights this is pretty straightforward lights and uh, they're what the um, little tabs were uh, set up for so the holes for those are already drilled and the wiring for those actually comes in from the old lights over here. I think I'm going to start with, let's see, I'll start by mounting. I've also got a bunch of connectors and everything. This is nice, clean, usually pretty easy work. So I'm going to start by connecting all of my tail light wires and uh, connecting everything up together. Um, most of this is pretty generic. It's usually, you know, the same with every vehicle or with every uh, setup. Uh, you've got your, on a four pin, you've got your white, white wire as your ground um, all the way around. Um, same thing with the seven pin. Um, your brown wire is, I got to double check. You know what? I've got a little map of what everything is, but your brown wire is going to be your constant light. Um, yellow is left directional. And green is right directional, and when you put them on, when you uh, hit the brakes, it actually turns both directionals on at the same time. So yeah, so I think that'll that'll be good. Uh, I just have to figure out which wires go to which on the back of these because these are some nice cheap Amazon specials with you know no directions whatsoever. So let me uh, test. I'm going to test those with my little battery. And see what looks like it's the uh, what looks like it's the standing the um, the running light. Which one's the brake slash turn directional? And with my little uh, breakaway battery box here, I've got white as my neutral. Um, on this one, it looks like black's neutral, I believe. Um, and then red is going to be your power. So um, or red or blue or power. It looks like. I don't know how well that's coming up on the video. Blue looks like it's just the the regular regular uh, you know, lights, regular driving lights, while red is uh, everything on super bright. I tried putting these both together at the same time. It's no brighter than if I did just red. So uh, the red wire I think is going to be my uh, directional slash brake wire. Black will be my ground, so black to white, that makes no sense whatever, whatsoever. Um, blue is, what I say, blue is the standing wire. And red is my directional. Alright, let me wire those up. And in case you're wondering, these lights right here, they do still work, but um, yeah, let's just say they've seen better days. This is what happens when you... Uh, when you put your lights hanging under and you kind of scrape them on the ground, so those are trash. So, what we said, we said like this black, these are going to be two different sizes. So, 14 and a 16, I think. 14 and a 16 together. Alright, so I've got some crimps that I could use for that. Uh, some 
crimp connections. I think sealable crimp connections that will work well. Okay, I found them. I found my uh, special crimper. Uh, so I have not that many left, but I have a assortment of. Connect oh, these are all bullet connections, aren't they? Oh, that, oh no, they aren't all. Oh, I don't know if that's the right name for them. So, I've got a couple of different types. That last one went on pretty well. This is a 1614. See, that's a connector. So these connectors would work where you crimp one end in, crimp the other end in, and then you have a connection that you can connect like that. You can make it semi-permanent by um, melting, uh, you know, giving it, putting some heat on it, and that'll hold this together. I'll use a couple of those probably. So I'm going to have to figure out how many of those I have. I don't, you know what? I'd rather do them all the same. Let's do all bullet connections for here. That means I don't need, don't need the shrink tape for these. The one good thing about these connectors, they actually do call them bullet connectors. I'm okay. Yeah, I was right. Uh, the one good thing about these is that they're not permanent. So if you screw up, you could uh, you could fix it. I decide that my lighting was uh, incorrect. I could still fix it. And the other nice thing is I can do like three ends here. All in one shot. Alright, so I can make these all. <sighs> Let's see. So I like to make the side that has power be the cup. The side that's getting power be the, be the peg. This might be too big. 16 to 22. ABG. Chickens disagree. You think this is the right size? Comment any comments? <laughs> ah, denied. Yeah. And I think that's the smallest one I have. Yeah, that's fantastic. Let's see if I take these and just really sink them. Got that. All right. Sorry for all the shaking. Uh, I gotta rinse and repeat. So I'm gonna do this for uh, all the bulb connections, and I'll do the uh, other ends, the uh, ones off the trailer itself. Okay. So I set up all of the uh, all the bulb connections on the light. And I'm setting up all the receiver connections on uh, the wires that are already fed back for the previous lighting. What I'm doing right here is I'm actually going to tag off of the white or the ground, rather, so I could actually reground at the light light's base. Um, I'm going to do that. I don't know if the light itself is grounded. I would assume it is, based on the fact that you know it's metal. It probably should be, but that'll just give me another grounding spot just in case. I don't know if this is all going to fit. Oh, that's tight. Yeah. So on this one, I probably could have dealt with, uh, probably could have uh, lived with a, let's see, a larger bullet connection. The only problem is the other end would just be falling off. There, it looks like it was through pretty well. I got through pretty well. These things are really cool. They cost a little bit more, but they're definitely worth it. You can then uh, 
I like using a lighter just because it's easier. Something, you know, that most people have lying around. Watch as it shrinks up the shrink tube. Just like that uh, shrink, that other uh, shrink tubing works. And it just suctions right around that. Once it cools down, it'll be uh, pretty stiff. You can notice, you can see here, you can see the amount of opening before and after. Okay, so this is all from the back, but let's go ahead and mount these lights up. Uh, you know what, I want to put the um, put the ground on the inside, not so. Now you notice there's adjustment on these and how much you can tilt them back and forth. white one goes to the black one connected brown one goes to the blue one connected and the red one which is like our um, break goes in this case on the left side to the yellow connection and I think I'll get a wire loom around this all once it's all done and I test it all and I'll get that a little bit of tape someone apparently wants to uh, be part of the film so let me do the same thing to the other side and uh, then we can move up front and uh, start working on the connections for the breakaway battery and the little master box with the uh, seven-way plug connection okay, and that's the right side done as well those are all connected I'll clean those up later with some wire loom and now we'll move to the front of the trailer and start looking at and mounting these items. Okay, so let's see here. We've got a little seven pin breakout box. What's nice is they've got um, the sections on here for um, connectors and everything so that you can, you know, put it in place and connect things through, either, you know, top, bottom, or side, and, and uh, make your connections within the uh, box itself. The cable's long enough that I could take this and just mount it right up here on this plate, and then right next to it I'll mount the emergency battery, and then up on there I will, or somewhere up there, I will mount the breakaway switch. Basically what this does is if there, this uh, wire connects to your, to the back of your uh, trailer hitch or your vehicle and if the trailer breaks away 
because it's tough to break it away, but that opening actually makes two contacts inside connect to each other and it closes the circuit. Once that circuit's closed, your that um, this battery will actually um, is actually wired into this. And what will happen is you can see here. So breakaway battery box. It's got a it has a white wire going to the ground, a blue wire going to the switch, a black wire going to the brakes, which are uh, brake power, which is black. So it will actually um, give ground to uh, from the battery to the system, and it will um, if this switch is is turned on, or in this case disconnected, which makes it into a closed state, it will engage the batteries fully. There's also a red wire coming up to it from the vehicle. It's called, they call it truck battery. It's actually the charging uh, connection. And that's a uh, positive 12 from the vehicle when the vehicle is running and connected to the trailer. Um, I'm gonna look into it. I'm not sure how you connect that on your vehicle, but you know, it depends on your vehicle setup. So that will actually keep the battery, you know, tended and charged. Um, I've already drilled holes for these, and I'm going to use the same bolts that I used to hold every, hold down the uh, planks with, and I will uh, mount these three devices up, and then we can uh, move on further down the road with wiring. And with those two connected, everything else is just wiring. So I've got all my wires going to my lights over there, um, including the white one for ground, which I'm going to use for the trailer brakes. Um, I've got all of my all of those connections will actually come into this junction box, along with the um, connections for our for the breakaway battery right there. Um, other than that, I've got connections from this breakaway switch going into there as well. And that's it. I mean, it's really not that complicated. I just got to make sure that I'm connecting the correct things to the correct spots. And then I have to make sure that my van is wired properly next. So next step will be disconnecting these wires here at a long enough length. I want to be able to leave the um, four prong connection, is that a four or five, I forget, uh, four prong, one of these, I want to have one of these actually coming off just in case I ever have to connect this to something that can't control the uh, trailer brakes. 
Um, so I want to have something with that, um, and I want to, uh, so I want to cut those wires, um, long enough that I could still have that coming out of this box. And, uh, yeah, alright. Um, so I think the next thing to do will be to get the trailer axle wires wired up, bring them up front, um, I've got some wiring that I could use for that, and then I will connect them in up here and might jack the vehicle up and or jack the trailer up and uh, hook a battery up to them and test them and see if make sure that they uh, actually break because to be honest I've never tried them out. All right, so let me get those wires in next. Okay, connecting electric for the brakes uh, on the driver's side. I've got them connected already and run over to the other side. I've both both axles are connected and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain those together on the passenger side and run them all the way up to the front and that will go into the box in the front. So I'm going to actually have to connect three wires together here. This front wire is my ground. You see somebody, uh, the previous uh, uh, person who set this up actually uh, did this with wire nuts, which, I mean, I guess you could do it. I don't really like using wire nuts, but everybody's got their own way of doing things, right? I mean, I guess if they hold together, they're, they're fine. And if they don't hold together, then you just replace them with something better. So, for these I'm going to have to actually get, so this line's coming in from, this is the back axle coming in and across, and then it goes forward, so I'm going to actually have to splice like this. You could, you know, cut, the, uh, you could uh, take the sheathing off the cable and just kind of uh, splice through there, actually, you know, take the wire and um, push it through and... and do, uh, what's that, butterfly split? I don't know what that's called. But where you actually take the sheathing off this, take this wire, stick it through, and then wrap it around, and then put a ton of tape or something on it. But um, I'm going to try doing it with one of uh, these. These are another one of the bullet connections, but this is just the female side. And I'm just going to connect all three into one. Let's see if that works. Uh, I hope I didn't cut that too low, but I actually have room to work. Yeah, I might as well cut this one too, about the same. I've done this before and what I do is just something that seems to work for me. I will take the wires, you know, my third wire, here we go, spin them together. It's not easy to do and get video of at the same time. I'll spin the three together that I want spliced and instead of coming in from the back, since there's a nice big opening on the front, I'll actually come from the front of the bullet connection. And then I will crimp it from there, and give it a pull to make sure it doesn't, you know, fall out. Let's see how well this works here. Is it yellow? Yeah, that's going nowhere. So, that being the case, I will do the same for this, uh, for the hot side. And I have it gray just because I don't really have anything else gray up in the front. It's supposed to connect to black. 
but uh, I was uh, checking out those the those cable connections up there, and to be honest with you, I don't know if those are all going to stay the same or not. I don't know if the connections coming through the cable really are the color that they're supposed to be and coordinated to the spot that they're supposed to be. So it might look like a hot jumbled mess up there by the time I'm done, but I want to at least have my cables that are going up to the box, you know, kind of color coordinated. So for breaks, I'll go with white and gray. So that's good. That means it's really not going to come apart. I'm just going to uh, melt those all together next. And then I will uh, do the same to the next spot. So same thing up here at the front axle. Now except I've got four on each. So four power, four ground. And then those will continue on up to the front of the trailer. Okay, so what I did was I actually put um, ring ends on my wires for the uh, tail lights, and I'm going to pop these four in. I've got my ground actually already in there. Um, and what I did was I actually was checking from the plug to how my, my, um, to how my lineup, how my uh, layout is on my van. And I was making sure that the right colors go to the right thing, which they didn't. So you'll notice that the yellow wire is actually on the red post, brown wire is on the green post, green wire is on the brown post. Blue is good, white is good, and black is good. So black is for reverse lights, which I'm not going to use for now. Um, white is ground. Uh, red is power to charge up the, um, the breakaway, um, um, breakaway box. Uh, yellow is left turn. Green is right turn. Brown is running lights. And blue is brakes. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook these up, these little lights. I'll connect those and then... I'm going to have to set up everything as far as the uh, uh, breakaway switch and breakaway bo uh, breakaway box and connect those into the uh, into the um, um, brake line that actually connects to the uh, um, to the brake uh, um, brake line for the vehicle. Now, one thing to mention when you are testing these, you have to remember. Okay, well, if I'm testing this plug here, right? You see the notch on the top. I'm testing or this plug here which is like in the 11 o'clock spot well think about when it's going into the plug and it's going from the 11 o'clock spot it's actually going to be connecting to the plug in the one o'clock spot so when you go to test these if you're testing these with like a um, digital meter or whatever and seeing what goes to what remember if i'm looking at my little layout here this one here sorry this one up here actually corresponds with this one here. Now red goes to the middle. This one here on the left side is actually on the right side for here because if you take this plug and you plug it in, that one goes into that one. So just remember that when you're trying to check out which pin is which um, or and, and take your time with a um, with the digital um, multimeter to see what's what. You can get cheap digital multimeter from uh, Harbor Freight um, for just a couple bucks, something you should have in your toolbox, and um, just check to see which one's connected to which. Okay, I'll make those four connections, and then I'm gonna have to figure out how to how to wire up the breakaway box, oh, uh, breakaway box and switch. But the diagram's right there, so it should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so I made all my connections. 
and this gray wire here is actually connected to my brake line here and you see I put a bullet connector there and that actually is going to go to the switch to the breakaway switch and then the battery will connect to the breakaway switch as well and what will happen is if you know, if I could do this right while holding a camera uh, with all that if the battery if the, if the breakaway switch is pulled uh, the battery should supply power to the um, to the brakes. I want to tr test it, but I'm not sure if it'll work. Then, hmm, I don't know how well charged this battery is, but there is a quick way of testing that. So let me give that a quick try. Let's see if, and we can test out the brakes too at the same time. Um, these I'm going to clean up a little bit and um, put them all um, in, in some wire loom. I do have an extra wire going to my white and that will actually be a gr extra ground wire which I will probably pull one of these screws from and ground add ground to the uh, chassis there all right I've jacked the front of the trailer up as much as humanly possible I was able to get one tire slightly off the ground okay let's see if we uh, ready set and yeah, I'd say that, uh, I'd say it's safe to say that, oh, that thing is locked. Huh, interesting. Those, there it goes. These brakes haven't been run for a long time. But, uh, yeah, put the key back in. You could hear it click, click when I do that. Sounds like they're killing the kids next door. <laughs> That's just kids playing, I guess. Brakes are still a little bit engaged, but I think they've just been sitting for so long. There it goes. This one's right back up. Probably wouldn't hurt to open those up and adjust the brakes, but my breakaway. Uh, breakaway kit actually does work as it should so that's plus all right I'm gonna get the cover back on that get some wire loom clean everything up make it look all nice and semi-professional and I'll set up that uh, that let that white wire for a ground and I have to check the connections in my van and uh, we could test that next actually we'll connect the van up and uh, probably um, do a last little test and try to load a empty vehicle onto the trailer and see how well it works. And with a little bit of wire loom, it actually looks a lot nicer. That one white wire I've got a ground set to a uh, ground. Um, I'm also going to uh, get some wire ties and wire tie this out um, all the way to the end. And actually, I gotta get a clip or something for the uh, breakaway cable. Uh, probably just like a a little, um, what are those latch clips called, those uh, metal hooks. I'll use one of those and that'll be it. So the next test is to connect it to my van and see if all the lights work. Okay, my connections are made. My standing lights work fine. My directionals work fine. But for some reason my brakes don't work fine, so i got to figure that out. But the next thing to do is uh, we're going to try to figure out whether or not uh, I could load a vehicle onto this while it's uh, connected to my van. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to move them out of the way so we don't want to uh, crush them. There's one thing that I forgot about. You need a module to actually combine your brake lights with your turn signals. They usually call it like a 3 to 2. I know this one has 5 going in and 4 coming out. But really, if we look at the ground and the tail, which are really, you know, separated out here, it's got a left turn, a brake, and a right turn. Looks like it says two, no, right turn. So what comes out is the left turn and right turn with the brake combined with them. So if you have your left turn signal on and you're hitting the brakes, your left turn, your left turn signal on your trailer will still blink. Your right turn signal will actually just stay solid and vice versa if you hit the right turn signal and the brake 
your right turn signal will blank, your left turn signal will stay on solid. And if you just hit the brake, both of your turn signals on your trailer will come on solid. So all I have to do is take this wired in. And what's kind of good about this particular one, actually it's got another four, four prong a, or a flat uh, connector. So what I'll do is I'll wire up up to here and I'll tuck this up behind everything. And even though I've got a four prong already with my, uh, my wiring, I'll have another one uh, just in case. Just in case something happens, you know, somebody cuts a wire or anything like that, it'll be all ready to go. Three to two, whatever the heck you want to call it, uh, combiner, reducer, is there. And with that in place, now, oops, now my brakes work. And while the brakes are on, hit the, the directionals work as well. That's pretty much it. I mean, everything's working now. It's working the way it's supposed to. So, that's it for uh, this. Back to uh, the rest of the build. This particular trailer project is done. Um, I have the lights all working. I tested the brakes. The brakes work out. I even loaded a uh, project vehicle onto it that I want to uh, clean up and uh, blast with the power washer. So, I <laughs> figured I might as well try loading something onto here, see how it does. Did just fine. None of my ramps, well, none of, none of the uh, cross pieces on my ramps failed. It is narrow. It is a very narrow trailer, um, but it works for what I need it for, and uh, you know, I liked it, um, liked this project. But that's about it for this project. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope this wasn't too long, and <laughs> hopefully there's some useful stuff in this uh, that might help you out. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out for videos coming up on this 39 Plymouth, which I um, hope to get out soon. I'm going to uh, start gutting it and see if it's worth fixing or not. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. It's, it's pretty rough shape. Um, also, I have another large trailer, large enclosed trailer that I'm building, and I'm going to start working on that and making videos for it. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and all the other fun stuff.